Hello, hello. One, two, three. Hello. Kichukunar Mode, Shuru Habe, first round with a raffle draw. Akorshono Nestan, Akono Logjon Beshki to come, the possibility on Egg Beshi. Hey, yeah, to me, Amarka says. Yes, you, 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 you. My nephrology, come here. I'm under a conductor, the Juno. Let her come to cook. Bagger come to a fellow, say, and a mammon said, Need a hat of fills. The Akon Shurutsa, mother, raffle draw for doctors. To meet a fellow of Vitre. Right. Vitre Poregase, I mean, need a ditchy. Now pick up one. Chok bondo grata tulo. This is the fifth prize. One, nine, eight. One, nine, eight. Welcome. To be able to fill this one. One, nine, eight K. Yes, stand up. It's six. What intuition? One, six, zero. So, Mithun got the one, six, zero. Okay. Second prize. Fourth prize. So, for third prize, Okay, pick up. It told up at our key. So this is the third prize. Middle number zero. Middle number zero, last number six. First number, what is the expectation? Who? Two who? Hey, please come. No. 
Now the second one. Hey, udita kan jawabnya, ha? Yes. The first number one. Second number eight. What is the expectation? Last number. No. No. It's a duck. Two. One. A two. Ah, is it <laughs> very good? Well, ever Ami Tuli. First prize. Na dekhe Tuli dekhi kunda ashi. Last number three. Second number, middle number nine. What is the expectation? First number? One. Who? Yes, it's one nine three. The first prize. Please up the number ballen. One nine three goes to Animal Hut. First prize. Okay, there's the end of the lucky draw for the doctors. There are pine, is that not going to pine? Next time. আমাদের এই অনুষ্ঠান পরিচালনা করলেন আমাদের সম্মানিত ডাইরেক্টর মনোস্বাস্থ্য ডাইরেক্ট সেন্টার ব্রিগেডিয়ার জেনারেল মোহসিন আহমেদ আমরা সকলে তার জন্য একটা করতালি দিতে পারি
ঝরার বিনিময়ে সেই পাখিটি মুক্তি পেল স্বাধীনতা পেল বন্দিশালা থেকে আর এই পাখিটি হচ্ছে উনিশশো সালের আমাদের বাংলাদেশের একটি প্রতীকী অর্থ কেননা পাকিস্তানি বাহিনীর নৃশংসতার কথা আমাদের কারো কাছে অজানা নয় পাকিস্তানি বাহিনী সাথে যুদ্ধ করে ত্রিশ লক্ষ মানুষের রক্তের বিনিময় পেয়েছে আমাদের এই স্বাধীনতা আমাদের এই স্বাধীনতা পেয়েছি বিজয়ের এই মাসে উনিশশো সালের ১৬ ডিসেম্বরে আমাদের কাছে বিজয় তাৎপর্য অনেক কেননা আমরা এই বিজয়ের মাসে স্বাধীনতা অর্জনের মাধ্যমেই জানতে পেরেছি যে কিভাবে স্বাধীন দেশে শাস নেওয়ার অধিকার রাখা যায় তাই তো সুকান্ত ভট্টাচার্যের ভাষায় বলতে হয় সাবাস বাংলাদেশ এ পৃথিবী অবাক তাকিয়ে রয় জলে পুড়ে মরে ছাড় খার তবু মাথানো আবার নয় বিজয়ের এই মাসে মৃদু বাতাস আর শিশির ভেজা শীতের আমেজের এই সন্ধ্যায় আপনাদের সবাইকে জানাচ্ছি আন্তরিক শুভেচ্ছা এবং অভিনন্দন আসসালামু আলাইকুম আজকের এই অনুষ্ঠানে আপনাদের সাথে আছি আমি ডক্টর ফাহমিদা সুলতানা রিমি এবং আমি ডক্টর হাসনা হেনা মৌ গণস্বাস্থ্য কেন্দ্রের এই মিলনায়তনে আমরা সকলে আজ একত্রিত হয়েছি জিকে নেফ্রোলজি কনফারেন্স টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টি টুতে Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We cordially welcome all of you in the third nephrology conference organized by Ganeshastho Kendro. Our nephrology conference has been designed to explore the scientific and clinical aspects of kidney disease. To start with, we now have the plenary session. To chair this session, we have Professor Dr. Ehitashamal Mohawk, Dr. Nurul Islam, Dr. Feddos Kamal Bhuya and as moderator, Dr. Maksuda Bagam Moni. And, and the speaker of this session, we are extremely lucky and honored to address Dr. Esanul Korim. This session's topic is management of refractory nephrotic syndrome in diabetic matters. gentlemen there is some corrections uh, in our first session due to the road blockade our chairperson could not attend in time uh, our chairperson of the first session is professor brigadier general mamun mustafi sir and associate professor dr yusha f ansari and the moderator maksuda begum moni Please come to the stage. Assalamu alaikum and very good evening everyone. Uh, my uh, honorable chairperson, uh, respected uh, colleague and senior and junior colleague, uh, I welcome you to today's first session. And today we have two chairperson. Uh, we all know our uh, very loving and very respected uh, mother, uh, our professor Brigadier Mamun Mustafi sir and uh, working as the departmental head of Konshastu Medical College and Hospital. And our second chairperson our uh, Dr. Yusha F. Ansari, sir, uh, he is working as associate professor at Uttara Adhunik Medical College and Hospital. And our, uh, today we have three speakers. And uh, now I request our chairperson to start the session. Our first speaker, Dr. A.N.M. Esanun Korim sir, working as associate professor, Shohit Mansur Ali Medical College and Hospital. I request my, our first speaker to come on dais to deliver his speech. Uh, sorry, there is a correction. Uh, Shohit Jaur Roman Medical College, 
our first speaker uh, sir, uh, is working as associate professor. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Very good afternoon. I am very happy to be here. I have a lot of questions in the session. I have a lot of questions in the first time. I have a lot of questions in the first time. I have a lot of questions in the first time. I have a lot of questions in the first time. I have a lot of questions in the first time. हमारे जाति जनों बंगमंदु शेख मजबूर रहमान के एवं मुक्ति जुद्दे शोहित सिद्धि दा आत्मदान करी शौकोले प्रति। नाम है स्टार्टिंग मैच सेशन। My topic is management of nephrotic, uh, refractory nephrotic syndrome in diabetes mellitus. Diabetes is the leading cause of end-stage renal disease in developed countries. Besides, in developing countries, diabetic kidney disease is also increasing. Additionally, severely increased albuminuria or massive proteinuria and renal insufficiency are frequent accompaniment of diabetic nephropathy. However, a second disease superimposed on diabetic nephropathy uh, of concern, especially if the proteinuria is massive or renal failure is deemed to be acute onset. Now, terminology. Diabetic nephropathy historically defined as the clinical presence of albuminuria accompanied by retinopathy in presence with type 1 diabetes. And the presence of albuminuria was considered to be an early sign of classical diabetic glomerulopathy, which is characterized pathologically by glomerular basement membrane thickening, endocellular damage, messenger expansion, and nodules and podocyte loss. But in terms of diabetic kidney disease, it's a clinical diagnosis based upon the presence of albuminuria decreased GFR, eGFR, estimated GFR or both uh, in patients with diabetes. But it is not intended to indicate a specific kidney disease phenotype in patients with diabetes. Rather, various forms of kidney disease attributable to diabetes, including non-classical glomerular lesions and also the tubular interstitial disease. These are the uh, pathology of diabetic glomerulopathy that is a diffuse uh, capillary basement membrane thickening and also podocyte effacement and also the messenger expansion. And histologically, that is uh, development of the nodules and loss of architecture of the glomerulus. What are the risk factors? leads to the, uh, the uh, development of the nephropathy. Uncontrolled diabetes mellitus for long-standing, high HbA1c, high systolic blood pressure, albuminuria grade, severe the albuminuria and chance of progression of the renal disease is more. Decreased baseline GFR, duration of the diabetes, and other microvascular complications like retinopathy, peripheral, and autonomic neuropathy. Family history also important for development of the diabetic nephropathy. We know there are metabolic factors and hemodynamic factors. All of the causes, activation of the intracellular signaling pathway, oxidative stress, and other uh, pathways, including causing inflammation, fibrosis, and ultimately development of the diabetic kidney disease. 
these are the conceptual model of the natural history hyperglycemia and cellular injury starts with microalbuminuria and macroalbuminuria gfr initially normal low and ultimately gfr is decreased and hypertension as we know the severity of the albuminuria associated with severity of the hypertension massive albuminuria associated with severe hypertension and also progresses uh, with cardiovascular complications this showing that is albuminuria excess al glomerular albumin and leak what are the fate of the albumin this albumin ultimately uh, reabsorbed in the renal tubules and the tubular leakage tubular transcytosis and also the uptake of filtered albumin this albumin is accumulation causing inflammation and ultimately the tubular interstitial disease and then tubular reabsorption of the albumin also hampered and so the albumin area in later stage of the diabetic kidney disease albumin area is more and more this slide shows that is glomerular damage and tubular damage leads to the microalbuminuria and initial phase of the hyperglycemia leads to the increase glucose load to the proximal convoluted tubule and leads to the descending loop of the loop of henle and this there is increased absorption of the glucose and sodium and chloride that is sodium glucose co transport to that is up regulated this up regulation this causing the changes and ultimately leads to so there more sodium and glucose absorption in the proximal tubule and decrease delivery of sodium to the distal tubules and ultimately macula densa is activated so afferenatrol is vasodilated and efferenatrol is vasoconstricted and development of the intraglomerular hypertension and this also leads to development of the more progression of diabetic kidney disease and leads to marked albuminuria now nephrotic syndrome as we know the nephrotic syndrome is defined by the presence of heavy proteinuria hyperalbuminuria peripheral edema hyperlipidemia and thrombotic disease and the term nephrotic syndrome is generally used for an immune related kidney disease with poor clinical outcome especially resistant to treatment with steroid or immunosuppressant for 6 months so the refractory nephrotic syndrome specially termed for immune related kidney disease not for diabetes mellitus but when the nephrotic syndrome in diabetic kidney disease or diabetic nephropathy is intractable sometimes it is termed as a refractory nephrotic syndrome in diabetes mellitus 30% of the adult patient with nephrotic syndrome having systemic disease the like diabetes amyloidosis sle and remaining are due to primary renal disease that is a minimal chance disease fsgs and membranous nephropathy nephrotic syndrome also can develop in other immune related disease that is immunoglobulin a nephropathy post infection and membranous proliferative glomerular nephritis sometimes heavy proteinuria occur in the absence of hypoalbuminemia or edema management type of this nephrotic range proteinuria or heavy albuminuria is same that of nephrotic syndrome uh, this may this may occur in diabetes mellitus or any other primary renal disease nowadays albumin excretion is uh, is the prime importance for development uh, for uh, classification of the severity of the diabetic renal disease when acl level is 3 uh, 3 uh, 30 to 300 it is called moderately increased albuminuria when more than 300 it is called severely increased albuminuria as the albuminuria is progress that is uh, more time progress the gfr is decreased and nephron mass is also reduced 
this slide shows the GK uh, KDCO guideline according to the albuminuria and CKD staging. So today's topics about the management of severe in increased albuminuria in diabetes mellitus. General measures applicable to all patients with diabetes mellitus, like all of the diabetic patients, although some specific considerations like lifestyle modifications, healthy diet, physical activity, smoking cessations, and weight management. Regular risk factor assessment every three to six months. Glycemic control, first line if GFR more than 30, this is metformin, and second line if GFR more than 20, that is sodium glucose co-transport 2 inhibitor. Regarding management of the glycemic control, it is recommended that the HbA1c is 7% or less in all patients with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. All patients with uh, diabetic nephropathy have cardiovascular risk factor. So lipid lowering drugs with atrovastatin or simvastatin, fluvastatin should be started. If the patient having renal failure, these drugs are uh, safely started because they have no need to dose reduction. Dose reduction in case of GFR. In case of hypertension management, diabetes with CKD, blood pressure target should be 125 to uh, 130 and less than 80. Regarding management of the hypertension in diabetes with proteinuria, AC inhibitor, AC inhibitor or ARB should be started. If the, this should, could not control the diabetes, then dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker would be started. Patients with severely increased albuminuria or massive albuminuria, non dihydropyridine cal uh, calcium channel blocker or diuretics may be added. But never combined should AC inhibitor or ARB with combined or combination of one of the drugs with renin inhibitor should be avoided. There are several groups of AC inhibitor and ERB. All other similar efficacy should be used with cautions with special considerations. Diabetes with diabetic nephropathy, intractable edema is a factor to manage it. There is a study uh, published in 2015. Uh, uh, use of dapagliflozin to reduce the edema in patients of hospitalized patient. This slide shows that patient was started with oral furosemide and injectable furosemide, but there is no improvement of diuresis. But on the day uh, the SGLT2 inhibitor was started, then the diuresis was started. And after 11 days, that is weight loss with diuresis. And also, that is urine output also increased. That is after started of SGLT2 inhibitors. And weight is reduced. Serum creatinine, baseline serum creatinine is also mildly increased but stable and urine output is also increased and weight is also reduced. It can be used as a volume overload in a patient of diabetic uh, nephrotic syndrome. Another uh, study is uh, published in 2019, same used as a renin generation system inhibitors. This causing urinary glucose excretion with urinary sodium excretion, decrease excess cellular volume and also body weight and blood pressure reduction. So these drugs may also use as a uh, not only but, uh, in glucose lowering but also in volume reduction and weight reduction. Effect of HDLT 
two inhibitor on kidney disease progression. There are meta analysis of 13 trials of so were 90,000 participants, namely as credence, DAPA, CKD, and IMPA, CKD, IMPA kidney trials. All uh, results is reduced rate of kidney disease progression regardless whether the patient had diabetes. So, patient with severely increased albuminuria, absolute benefit of SGLT2 inhibitor therapy is greater among those with higher level of albuminuria despite similar risk factors. Now, mineral quality receptor antagonist in albuminuric CKD. Activation of mineral quality receptor is associated with cardiovascular or kidney disease pituitively by stimulating the inflammatory and fibrotic cascade. Steroidal uh, MRA is, uh, such as Spinalocturus was tried with, but they, have, they, should, uh, they are associated with hyperkalemia. Non-steroidal miracle receptor antagonists, phenylalanine also reduce the albumin it has a similar effect on serum potassium. So the disease, uh, these drugs can be used in diabetic CKD to reduce the progression. There are two large trials, Fidelio DKD and also Figaro DKD. And also that is a, that also a pooled analysis of these two trials, fidelity pooled analysis. Both trials uh, significantly indicate that uh, they are non-significantly reduce the all-cause mortality. So we can use the phenylalanine in patient with massive albuminuria when the patient on angiotensin receptor blocker or inhibitor combined with SGLT2 inhibitor despite the use of the two drugs persistence of the albuminuria then this uh, phenylalanine can be used. Now, glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor antagonist showed the slow rate of decline in GFR and prevent the worsening of albuminuria. If the initial glucose therapy, glucose lowering therapy is ineffective and patient is on SGLT2 inhibitor, GLP-1 agonist may be used to reduce the maintain the blood glucose level. So, Kedigo Executive Summary 2022 and American Diabetic Association combinedly preliminary reports suggested that diabetic kidney disease management with albuminuria especially combined with adenine angiotensin system inhibitors, metformin, sodium glucose cotaspid 2 inhibitors, glucagon-like peptides and a non steroidal miracle receptor antagonist. Now the management of the edema in severely increased albuminuria in patient of diabetes. As you all, normal management of the other nephrotic patient, dietary sodium restriction, two gram per day and diuretics can be used. First level is loop diuretics, furosemide and torosemide and bimetronide. If the loop diuretics is not works at all, if the patient is hypokalemic, spinal lactam may be added. Uh, if the patient is normokalemia or hyperkalemia, maybe thiazide-like diuretics, metalozan, chlorthalidone, or indepamide, or thiazide-type diuretic, hydrochlorothiazide may be added to block the distal tubule and counteract the uh, electrolyte imbalance and also improve the diuresis. These are the all diuretics used in uh, edematous state of nephrotic syndrome. Patient with severe hypoalbumin, we have plasma mean less than two. Albumin infusion sometimes advocated, but after, adbu uh, after addition of the albumin, on a sodium excretion through urinary sodium excretion should be monitored. If there is no recognizable increase of sodium excretion on urinary, then sodium albumin infusion should not be continued. 
A variety of factors can account for persistent sodium and water retention without uh, typical use of the diuretics with inadequate diuretic dose, decreased uh, intestinal absorption of oral diuretics, decreased diuretic secretion in the tubular fluid, increased sodium reabsorption at the sites nephron other than the other diuretics, excessive sodium intake. These are all discussed earlier. Patient unresponsive to intravenous diuretics and sometimes albumin, what then we can do? We may use ultrafiltration, slow continuous ultrafiltration or continuous venovenous hemofiltration. Kidney replacement therapy is generally reserved for patients with substantial cardiorenal dysfunction who require concomitant dialysis or in patients control in clinical trials. This is an unusual situation with associated with uh, cardiac failure. Now, uh, the progression or regression of the albuminuria. Factors uh, favoring the progression or albu albuminuria is better management of glycemic control, blood glucose, and other uh, blood uh, lipid profile management. In a study of 397 patients of uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus, 20% have regressed to the normal level of albumin excretion, and 19% re experience progression to severely increased albuminuria. So, when a patient uh, presents with severely increased albuminuria, as, in, as a part of uh, nephrotic syndrome, so he or she may be regression with adequate control and adequate medications. Monitoring the severely increased albuminuria, every three to six months we should monitor the volume status, blood pressure, EGFR, serum potassium, sb one and elevation of the serum albumin. Uh, evaluation of the serum albumin or total protein excretion, usually random ACR. A referral to patients with diabetic kidney, uh, kidney to a specialist nephrology, especially when advanced CKD, heavy albuminuria, resistant hypertension, evidence of an inflammatory kidney disease that is hematuria or sterile pyuria, and difficult to manage complications, that is hyperkalemia or anemia. When we suspect a case of uh, diabetic disease, which is uh, non-diabetic kidney disease, Severely elevated albuminuria, red blood cell cast, dysmorphic RBC, presence of other systemic disease, and sudden rise of albuminuria, sudden development of nephrotic syndrome, or rapid decline of estimated GFR. We should suspect the case with a diabetic patient having a non-diabetic kidney disease, that is primary glomerular disease or other diseases. Uh, in 2013, there is a uh, report with uh, kidney biopsy with a diabetic patient. 61 biopsy patient, then one fourth of them are diabetic patient. One third of the diabetic patient have his diabetic glomeropathy. One third having diabetic glomeropathy plus non-diabetic kidney disease, and one third having non-diabetic kidney disease alone. What are the non-diabetic kidney disease? Acute tubular necrosis, immune-related glomerular disease, hypertensive nephrosclerosis, and focus segment of glomerular sclerosis. Now, exp my experience here with uh, Bogura Shoyji Orhan Medical College, renal biopsy finding of diabetic patients. We performed renal biopsy at Medical College Hospital. Total number of patients was 34. About 34 patients, 12 patients was reported as a case of diabetic glomerulosclerosis, that is 35%. Six patients having uh, non-diabetic kidney disease coexisting with diabetic glomerulosclerosis, that is 18%. Then are acute interstitial nephritis, messenger peripheral glomerular nephritis 1, C1Q nephropathy, SLE, and PIGN. And 47% of the total biopsy patients having non-diabetic kidney disease. What are the di differentials? They are the, all are the primary glomerular diseases. Now, a patient with diabetes with nephrotic syndrome, one of the 34 patients, Mrs. Nasrin Akhtar, 44 years is, diabetes for four years and hypertension for two years, recurrent leg and body swelling for six months. She was on hypoglycemic as in glimepride and linagliptin and antihypertensive, only certain with hydrochlorothiazine and bisoprolol and lipid lowering drugs. For her swelling, she is taking frusamide and spinolactone. On examination, she is mildly anemic and moderately edematous. Blood pressure 170 and 90 with, anti with those antihypertensive. And 
On other systemic examination, otherwise normal except ascites. Investigation findings means albumin 3 plus, RBC 6 to 8, granular and hyaline cast present, serum creatine 1.4, serum albumin 1.8, and serum total protein 4.2. 24 unit total protein is 10 gram per 24 hours. She is uh, recently diagnosed a case of uh, hypothyroidism. TSH was 14. Random blood sugar is 8. Ultrasonal abdomen is moderate ascites with mild bilateral proliferation. Cardiac function reverse ECG is normal. And provisional diagnosis is diabetes, hypertension, hypothyroidism with nephrotic syndrome. We have facilities to retinopathy skin in every hospital. She had uh, diabetic retinopathy with maculopathy was found in both eyes. Um, serology was, the screening was done uh, as patient is female, ANA, anti DS, DNA, C, ANCA, P, ANCA, C3, C4, all is normal, and viral markers are also normal. Renal biopsy was done in 26 January 2022. Bio diagnosis was membranous glomerulopathy stage 2. For confirmation of, as a patient with a diabetic, we performed the phospholipase A2 receptor antibody, quantitative. It was also positive, 438. Reference value is more than 20. These are the renal biopsy reports. Uh, this is the membranous glomerulopathy stage 2. These are the phospholase A2 receptor antibody. It was done from outside Bangladesh. She received Ponticilli, cyclophosphamide-based regimen, and other supportive measures. After receiving therapy, phospholase A2 receptor antibody was negative, less than 2, after 6 months. On follow-up visit, urine albumin 2 plus, serum albumin 3.7, normal renal function, UPCR is 2.8, and also oral uh, thyroid replacement therapy with TSS is normal. So final diagnosis is diabetes mellitus with membranous nephropathy with hypothyroidism. So take home message, diabetic nephropathy is a long-standing complication of diabetes mellitus. Severely increased albuminuria, proteinuria, even nephrotic range, increased risk of manifold progress to ESKD and cardiovascular complications. Early interventions with appropriate therapy may slow or even regression of the albuminuria. Presence of non-diabetic kinetics is kept in mind in an unusual presentation in diabetes mellitus. Thank you. Thank you for patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your nice and elaborative and informative presentation. Now our second topic on diabetic complement in diabetic kidney disease. Our second speaker, Dr. Tabasan Sabat, madam, working as associate professor, Department of Nephrology, Bardem. I request our second speaker to come on diabetes for her deliberation. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today is 30th December. Few years more, we will uh, welcome the 2023 
So at this moment, I would like to wish you all a very prosperous new year ahead. Uh, today my topic is complement in diabetic kidney disease. The classic and global vision of CKD, DKD has placed it as a non-inflammatory glomerular disease, directing its pathogenesis towards classical pathway of <coughs> hemodynamic and metabolic alteration. However, the vision is limited by recent discoveries and advances in understanding of immune system. The complement activation plays a role in various organs in diabetes mellitus. However, in diabetic nephropathy, the role of complement activation is poorly understood. Yet, I will try to uh, focus on this topic. I'm Dr. Tabassum Samad. I'm acting as Associate Professor in Department of Nephrology of Bardem General Hospital. And before starting my speech, I would like to disclose that I have no uh, conflict of interest in relation to this presentation. The immune system has two components. The first is surveillance, which it identifies any potential danger in the body and gives signal. And next, the <clears throat> part, which acts as SWAT team, recognizes the specific danger and exterminate it. Let's have a quick overview of complement system. The complement system is constituted by soluble and membrane-bound proteins that respond to alarm signals and through a proteolytic cascade generate a plethora of immune effectors. The main triggers that activate the complement system are the classical pathway where the C1 binds with the uh, immunoglobulin M or G immune complex, that is the classical pathway. Uh, the spontaneous and continuous hydrolysis of C3, that is the alternative pathway, and binding of mannose binding lectin to the carbohydrate moiety of the bacteria, which is rich in mannose, this is a lectin pathway. Uh, sorry. Uh, while each pathway is unique in its activation, they all converge to C3B, the central amplification system, which ultimately uh, leads to priming the membrane attack complex. And this causes tissue injury and other effectors, those causes chemotaxis, activation of the antigen presenting cells, and others like C3A and C3B causes sporocyte injury, C5A and C5B causes T cell activation, maturation of B cell, and also reduce the uh, insulin sensitivity in the adipose tissue. Now the question comes, does the kidney produce complement? Traditionally, we know that um, these complements are produced in the liver, but kidney also produces this. A study done in uh, kidney transplant re recipients where the donor derived C3 in, was uh, around 10% of total circulating C3 in, a recipient, in recipients during acute allograft rejections, whereas around 5% of the donor-derived C3 was found in total circulating C3 during a quiescent period. Therefore, the kidney contributes around 5% of systemic C3, and it can synthesize more during tubulitis. And various uh, researches also show that kidney is sufficient, uh, I mean, uh, amount of, I mean, it's possible that it can produce a sufficient amount of components of the complements. Okay, now let's see how this uh, complement activation mechanism occurs in diabetic kidney disease. In diabetic kidney disease, uh, the main increased amount of immune complex that deposits in the kidney tissue, which occurs through classical pathway, and increased autoreactivity of the uh, MBL, that is uh, mannose binding lectin, which binds with the increased glycolated protein and thus causes the uh, Lectin pathway activation, activation, and the role of alternative pathway is yet not clear. Another is CD59, which inhibits the MSC, that is membrane attack complex, and these glycated proteins, this reduces or inhibits this inhibitory effect of CD59. Therefore, all the complement activation exaggerates and ultimately causes increased amount of reactive oxygen species, increased release of cytokine and growth factor, 
ultimately leading to kidney inflammation and increased fibrosis. Now what are the evidences that there is complement activation in diabetic kidney disease? BASPI et al., uh, they studied, they did an experiment on autopsied kidneys, total 151, and they compared the diabetic cases with and without diabetic nephropathy with normal diabetic controls. And they found that there is deposition of C4D is more in diabetic nephropathy cases. Now, to investigate which complement pathway leads to this deposition of C4D. So they stained MBL and C1Q and found that there is 6% MBL in the diabetic cases, but there is no MBL in the non-diabetic controls, whereas C1Q was more in the diabetic cases with nephropathies. To gather more evidences uh, in, for, in favor of the classical pathway, uh, the researchers stained the diabetic nephropathy kidneys and compared it with the living donors in terms of the all components of the classical pathway and found that the classical components of the classical pathway are more in the diabetic nephropathy cases. And to uh, uh, gather evidence regarding the lectin pathway, Ostegard et al. They studied, um, they studied the uh, streptogosin-induced mice who developed type 1 diabetes and stained the kidney tissue and found there is intense staining of mannose binding lectin in diabetic animals. Therefore, it goes in favor of the lectin pathway. They also studied and found that there was increased uh, C5A in human renal biopsy tissue and its concentration is associated with the severity of the ne diabetic nephropathy. And also to see the therapeutic side, uh, they gave C5A inhibitor to the mice and found that there was reduced lipid accumulation in the kidney, reduction of the urea and creatinine in the blood, and also there was reduced fibrosis, tubular fibrosis in kidney in the mice. Then they looked for C5BN9, that is the membrane at a complex, the last portion of the flowchart which I showed earlier. And they found that these were almost equal in the diabetic cases with and without diabetic nephropathy, but the amount is or the percentage was associated with the severity of the diabetic nephropathy. So what is the point here? The important point is that Recent evidences indicates that conventional venoprotective agents used in DKD do not target complement, therefore leaving this web of inflammation um, stimuli intact. So there is a horizon, large horizon in front of us to manage these DKD pa uh, patients by targeting the complement therapy. What are those? Let's see here. Uh, two of them are already FDA approved, the C1 inhibitor which is approved for hereditary angioedema and this blocks the classical pathway. Second is anti-C5A inhibitor, eculizumab, which has been uh, approved for PNH and atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome. There are other drugs like DPP4 inhibitor, uh, it is thought to be act in the lectin pathway, it blocks the um, those uh, mannose associated proteas, serine proteas, and blocks the lectin pathway. And it has been hypothesized by a researcher. He gave 131 patients um, randomly citagliptin and uh, placebo and found that there was reduced amount of MBL and uh, there was reduced amount of MBL and it was uh, thought that C4 is the main culprit in lectin pathway to cause DKD. And what are the other agents uh, in line? Uh, these are all under, under investigations. C3A receptor antagonist and C5A receptor antagonist. One of this is avacopan, which has been um, prescribed, has been advocated for unca-associated uh, vasculitis recently in the KDGO guideline. So, as I said, there is a large horizon in front of us, so we should 
uh, focus on the future studies, which should also focus on development of novel pharmacological agents that target the complement pathway to elevate inflammation, oxidative stress, and kidney fibrosis. So this is all of my today's lecture. I would like to give tribute to this legend today. And not but the least, I also want to share a few happy moments of our institute. Okay, this is few pictures of the kidney transplant recipients of our institute. The lower uh, bottom one, Mr. Nurul Amin, who has been transplanted uh, 11 years back. And the above is Mrs. Mahin, who has been transplanted about 15 years back. Subsequently, she got married, and after 11 years of her, uh, after 11 years after her transplant, she gave birth to this little baby. So these are the motivations that keep all of us going. So thank you very much. Thank you, madam, for your nice presentation. Now, our third and last topic is diabetes management in diabetic kidney disease. And our third speaker, Dr. Sudhanshu Kumar Shaha, working as assistant professor, Bardem General Hospital. Please, uh, I now I would like to request our third speaker and our last speaker, Kamon Dias. Is that Bhutan? Bhutan? Mutated. Hmm. 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 Then. Arabe. Chicken da. Thank you, reporter, for introducing me. Respected chairperson of the session, respected teachers, my dear colleague, senior and junior, welcome you to this honored gathering. I thanks to Gronshastha family, especially Professor Brigadier General Mahon Mustafisar, for giving me the opportunity. We all know diabetes and diabetic kidney disease is increasing day by day. So, my topic on management of diabetes in diabetic kidney disease. I will talk about introduction, brief idea about diabetic kidney disease, management of diabetes in different stages of CKD, monitoring and target, and lastly conclusion. This is the global scenario of diabetes mellitus. It is a slide from IDF, 
which shows that diabetes is increasing day by day. In 2017, in Southeast Asia, our diabetic population was, was, was 82 million. 82 million, and it will increase to 51 million by the year of 2045. That is 82. 4% population will be increased. This is alarming. We all know diabetes had some micro and microvascular complication. Kidney involvement is one of the microvascular complication. This is the data from US state which shows that diabetes is the leading cause of ESRD. Other microvascular complication of diabetes includes Cerebral vascular disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetic foot problem, and diabetic eye disease. Now, what is DKD? Diabetic kidney disease is a clinical diagnosis based upon presence of albuminuria, decreased estimated GFR, or both in diabetes. Now, how to screen and when to screen? In type 1, it should be started five years after diagnosis. In type 2, add diagnosis. Screening marker 2, spot urine for ACR, preferably morning specimen, and easy for estimation for omsen and creatinine. What defines CKD? CKD is defined by persistent urine abnormality, that is ACR more than or equal to 30 mg per gram, and or EGFR less than 60 ml per minute, and or evidence of kidney damage. This is oil on oil on slide, all of we are known to this, and in this slide, CKT is categorized according to albuminuria and GFR. My topic of presentation today is management of diabetes mellitus in CKD. I use the GFR according to management. Now, general management. All patients with diabetes should participate in the comprehensive diabetes self-management program. That is, it includes diet and nutrition, physical activity, and optimizing glycemic control. For obese or overweight, patients should intake, redu uh, reduce calorie intake and increase physical activity to achieve weight loss. This is food pyramid in a patient with diabetes and CKD. A patient with diabetes and CKD can consume adequate balanced diet which includes carbohydrate that is rich in whole grain, fiber, fruit and vegetable and as well as in increased amount of poly and monounsaturated fat. But reduced amount, are in, reduced amount includes refined carbohydrate, saturated fat, and sodium intake should be less than 2 grams per day. Regarding exercise, avoid, avoid sedentary behavior to undertake moderate intensity of physical activity for a cumulative duration of 150 minutes per week or to a level of comfortable with their cardiovascular and physical tolerance. Now treatment. Treatment include oral agent, non-insulin injectable agent, and insulin. Now, glycemic treatment for early CKD, that is EGFR above 30. Above 30, type 1 diabetes mellitus. Treatment is only insulin and insulin. All insulin are available in our country, but during management, the dose should be reduced in CKD patient. As CKD progresses, dose should be reduced. That is, when GFR above 50, no dose reduction required. But when GFR 20 to 50, around 25 percent, when GFR less than 10, around 50 percent dose reduction is required. Now, oral treatment of oral treatment in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus and CKD with EGFR above 30. Treatment is choice is combination of metformin and then HGL2 inhibitors. Second line, GLP-1 receptor agonist. If with this drug, glycemic status is not controlled, then add other drug. But this should be depends upon patient preference, cost, GFR and comorbidity. This slide show how to start metformin and how to monitor when patient on metformin. Metformin can be started when EGFR above 30. 
30 or more. Dose. In a patient with CKD, when GFR 30 to 44, and some patient with a GFR 45 to 59, dose is 1 gram. When GFR above 60, dose is 2 to 2.5 gram per day. And two things should be monitored when patient of diabetes with CKD on metformin. First, GFR, and second is vitamin B12 vaccine. Regarding GFR, when GFR 30 to 60, 59, GFR should be estimated every three to six months. And above 60, GFR estimated yearly. And when patient on metformin for more than four years, then vitamin B12 vaccine should be done. Regarding HGL2 inhibitor, it should be started when GFR 20 or above. The importance of this drug are, this is endoprotective and cardioprotective medication. This is the simple guide, how to start a GL2 inhibitor in patients with di to diabetes mellitus and CKD. Patient selection is important. First, here also GFR, it should be above 20 and proteinuria, that is ACR more than 20, 200, 200 milligram per gram and potential content decade are genital infection, genital infection, foot ulcer, diabetic ketoacidosis and patient on immunosuppression. Before starting a gel 2 inhibitor, two things should be mind, kept in mind. That is volume status of the patient and patient may develop hypoglycemia if a gel 2 inhibitor is started along with insulin or other sulfonyl ureas. Now, regarding GLP on receptor agonist, it is the second line choice drug of medication. The importance of this, these drugs are cardiovascular risk reduction drugs and it is also drug of choice in patients with overweight and obese. Regarding DPP-4 inhibitor, this drug had no cardiovascular benefit and selected DPP-4 inhibitor can be used according to GFR. Now, glycemic treatment with advanced CKD, that is, patients who are stage 4 and 5 but not on dialysis, Stage 4, in this stage, metformin is contraindicated. HGL2 inhibitor can be continued if tolerated. But in this population, HGLP, GLP-1 receptor agonist is good choice because these patients are more cardiovascular risk patients. And insulin and short-acting sulfonylurea are often necessary when medications are contraindicated, not tolerated, unavailable, or insufficient. Now, CKD stage 5, not on dialysis. Here, also, oral drug is choice. Other, oral drug is choice, like sulfonylurea, but who, are, who had inactive metabolites and relatively lower risk of hypoglycemia, that is, gilipizide, gilimipride, and gilicalazide, are choice in this stage. Other drug can be, can be used, like ripaglinide, linagliptin, and cautious use of GLP-1 receptor agonist. Now, treatment of patient on renal replacement therapy. First, hemodialysis patient. In this patient, insulin is choice, but dose should be reduced around 50%, around 50%. Other drug can be used, like sulfonylurea and inagliptin. And few data regarding use of GLP-1 receptor agonist. Patient on peritoneal dialysis. For patient on peritoneal dialysis who had diabetic control, with glycemic medication should be continued the treatment. For new development of diabetes, oral drug is choice. If glycemic target is not achieved, then add insulin. Now, glycemic treatment in a patient with kidney transplant recipient. In this stage, also metformin is a good choice, but HGL2 inhibitor is usually avoided. And insulin and other agents can be used according to EGFR. Now, this is the comprehensive care in diabetes and CKD. What is comprehensive care? Treatment of diabetes in CKD patient, not only control of sugar, but also control of cardiovascular risk and deter the progression of CKD. For this, we start anti-diabetic drug along with, if proteinuria persists, then add RAS blockade. And maximum dose if tolerated. If still proteinuria persists, then 
then use newly invented drug that is non-steroidal mineral corticoid antagonist, that is phenylenol. And for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, use statin and antiplatelet. The aim is to reduce the cardiovascular risk and also retard the progression of CKD. And this should be assessed every three to six months. And this is the comprehensive permit in patients with diabetes and CKD. In the base, diet and exercise. Then use anti-diabetic medication along with statin and RAS blocket. For cardiovascular protection, use GLP-1 receptor, mineralocorrhoid receptor antagonist, and also antiplatelet. For further protection, tight control of lipid, tight control of glucose, and also tight control of blood pressure. M to prevent the CKD progression and also retard the and cardiovascular disease reduction. This is the summarization of anti-diabetic medication in diabetes mellitus and CKD along among the patients had comorbidity. Metformin is weight neutralizing drug. Importantly, in metformin is weight neutralizing, not weight losing drug. Weight losing drugs are HGL2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist. For cardiovascular benefit, HGL2 inhibitor and GLP-1 agonist. For heart failure, HGL2 inhibitor. Insulin and sulfonylurea, all we know, it is potent anti-diabetic medication, but this drug had no effect on CKD progression or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. This is the dose adjustment of anti-diabetic medication according to the stage of CKD. Metformin is contraindicated below 30. Insulin can be used in any stage, but as CKD progresses, dose should be reduced. The HGL2 inhibitor, it should be used when GFR above 20 or more. And some GLP-1 agonist can be used even in patient on maintenance dialysis like doraglutide, semaglutide, and linaglutide. Regarding DPP-4 inhibitor, linagliptin is safe and it can be used in every stress. Regarding sarponylureas, it should be used cautiously and avoid hypoglycemia. Now, glycemic monitoring in patients with diabetes and CKD. Three tools, sugar profile, HB1C, and CGM. Of this, HB1C is commonly used. An stable diabetic patient it should be done every six month interval. But when patient develop unstable diabetes and frequent change of medication, it should be measured every three months. What is the target? Target of HB1C in patient with diabetes and CKD less than 6.5 to less than 8 percent. That is in early CKD and less comorbid condition. Target is tight glycemic control. That is less than 6.5. When patient is advanced CKD or patient on maintenance hemodialysis, target is less than 8 percent. In a summary, target of management, H1C target less than 6.5 to less than 8 percent, BP target, when proteinuria more than 1 gram, then BP target is less than 125 to 75 and proteinuria less than 1 gram, 130 to 80. For LDL target, less than 100, preferably less than 70 and BMI, 18.5 to 22.9. Now, what are the challenges to management of diabetes in CKD? We all know the hb one is a good marker for monitoring glycemic status, but hb one c may be unreliable because of eudemia in advanced CKD. Like dextrose in peritoneal fluid can interfere with diabetes management, metabolism of oral drug is disturbed in CKD patient, Change in dietary intake and exercise is typical of CKD. Change in insulin resistance and metabolism of insulin in advanced CKD. So, Mr. Chairperson, my take-home message, management of diabetes, treat as a whole. Target, control diabetes, control blood pressure, reduce CV risk, retard CKD progression. This is my references. Thanks, everyone. Now, I would like to, hello. Now, I would like to request our two speaker, please come on dice to receive your crest.
first speaker, uh, Dr. A.S.M. Inamul Kurin, sir, and second speaker, Dr. Isanul Kurin. Yes, and second speaker, Dr. Shudhan Shukumar Shah. Please come on, Dias. Sir. Yes, sir, uh, I'd like to request our honorable chairperson to conclude the session and uh, give her, give his uh, comments, please. And I also like to uh, thanks to, for inviting me in a such prestigious uh, session and to moderate the session. Thank you, sir. And also thanks to Dr. Mashura Javin. Thank you, sir. In our today's uh, session, this is our first session on diabetes mellitus, and we have enjoyed three excellent papers from our three uh, excellent nephrologists of our country and first uh, presentation from Esanul Karim sir and that covers uh, huge part of uh, our uh, diabetic patients burden that includes uh, diabetic nephropathy with re ref refractory nephrotic syndrome as well as superimposed GN as well and he presented a very nice case as well at the end of his session. I must congratulate him. And second one uh, from Dr. Tabasum Samat, that was an excellent presentation of which uh, show something very new to us. And uh, I think we have to uh, rethink uh, again and again to treat our diabetic nephropathy patients and in coming days, there will be some novel therapy in diabetic nephropathy patients as well. And last but not the least, from Dr. Shudhang Shu, uh, she, she delivered excellent and comprehensive talk on management of diabetes as a whole. Thank you, all three speakers. Thank you all. Thank you, our co-chairperson, sir. And I want to hand over microphone to uh, Chairperson, Professor, Brigadier General, Retired Bhavan Mustafi, sir. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Shona jatcha ma ke? In fact, we had a very, very um, I mean, mighty presentations this evening. The last presentation, in fact, summarized the 
how we should manage a patient with some kidney disease, the management of diabetes in this case patients. And he has described the stages, the drugs, and the monitoring systems also. Hats off, Dr. Sudhangshu, you presented it very nicely. The second speaker, definitely, as my co-chair said, it was an excellent eye-opening uh, gesture to the society. We have not thought about the compliments in diabetes, and this the, she has opened the chapter of compliments in the field of nephrology. We have a lot, lot of things to discuss, and inshallah, in the, as the days progresses, our society and all the community will come up with the um, uh, matters of compliments in diabetic kidney disease. The nephrotic syndrome in, nef in diabetes mellitus is definitely a great concern to all the nephrologists, whether it should be a, a diabetic origin or it should be a non-diabetic origin with the diabetes. And Dr. S. Anul Kurim has presented it so smoothly that everybody possibly realized that things has to be divided. We have to exclude fast whether there's any non-diabetic kidney disease or not and when the biopsy should be done and what are the drugs and what are the monitoring that we should do. Just one simple thing I just want to add. While I was going through the literature, I found one interesting observation and a study. As you all know that uh, we use a steroid in case of all, almost all nephrotic syndrome. So, but in case of diabetes, we can't use these drugs as routine uh, in unlike other, other conditions. Then here, some researchers found an interesting observation. They, uh, they had used SCTH patch in case of nephrotic syndrome related to a diabetic mortis, which is not related to any other conditions. And they have found very interesting results that almost 50% patients had remission, complete remission of the diabetic proteinuria. So that is a very eye-opening study that I found in the literature. So these things also uh, I just want to share with you. I am very thankful to all the, um, uh, my, my chair and my report here, the moderator. It has been an excellent session because of the contribution on them. I just want to hand over the crest to Dr. Moksuda Moni, for as he, she has managed this session very nicely. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, inauguration session is going to be start very nice, uh, very very soon. Our chief guest, Professor Harun, uh, was um, he was himself sick, but in spite of that, he is on the way because of the heavy traffic today. It has been been delayed, but we are expecting in very very um, few within few moments. And I am very sorry to say that our um, special guest, Professor Nejamuddin, is also sick. He remained admitted in the hospital just few days back. Our president-elect of the Renal Association is possibly not coming today. So we are going to start our sessions right at this moment. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
one for doctors which has already ended and another for the staff all the staffs please collect your raffle draw coupon কিছুক্ষণের মধ্যে আমাদের ইনগ্রাল সেরিমনি শুরু হবে তারপরে আমাদের স্টাফদের রাফেল ড্র তারপরে আমাদের কালচার প্রোগ্রামে যাব আমরা We are moving to our inaugural ceremony session. Today in our inaugural ceremony, chief guest of today's session is Dr. Haruna Roshid Sar. He is a professor of the Department of Nephrology and senior consultant of Kidney Foundation Hospital and Research Institute. He is also founder and president of Kidney Foundation Bangladesh. He will be with us very soon. Our special guest of today's session, Dr. Mohammad Nizamuddin Choudhury, who is the professor and departmental head of BRB Hospitals Limited, and he is newly elected president of Bangladesh Renal Association. I'm sorry to say, uh, sir could not attend the session due to his sickness, 
but he has sent back his message and wished good luck for our GK Nephrocon. We have also among us the guest of honor, Dr. Mohammad Babur Alamsar, who is the professor of the Department of Nephrology, National Institute of Kidney Disease and Urology, and also newly elected Secretary General of Bangladesh Renal Association. Thank you very much, sir. We are very honored with your presence. Now I'd like to request Chairman of the Organizing Committee, Professor Brigadier General Mamun Mustafi, sir, and the Chairman of Scientific Committee, Professor Mahabur Rahman, sir, to come to the stage with our respected special guests, guest of honor. Please come to the stage, sir. And also, I would like to request our new director, Brigadier General Dr. Mohsin Udin Ahmed, sir. Please come to the stage. Now, I'd like to request Brigadier General Mohsin Udin, sir, to give his speech. Bismillah rahman rahim respected chairperson, distinguished guest, and the August gathering in front. On behalf of Konoshasto Dialysis Unit, I welcome you to the scientific session. Very soon, we're going to inaugurate the session under the chairpersonship of the Professor Mamun Mustafi, retired Brigadier General. And our the chief guest, that is Professor Harun Rashid, you already know, he is on the way and stuck due to traffic jam. The kidney is the vital organ of the body. So when it becomes disease, so life becomes hell. So it is our doctor's responsibility to maintain or to stop the disease. Cure rate is very less. So continuous study, seminar, will give new idea and new looks. As we have come to know today, the complement system is a new idea. So this scientific session certainly throw a new light and give a new hope to the kidney patients. I expect the, suspect, uh, the successful completion of this conference. With that, I come to conclude my speech and waiting for the inauguration. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to request the chairman of the organizi organizing committee, Professor Brigadier General Maun Mustafi Sar, to give his welcome speech. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Amar Shamne Upustit Amar Shakur Mibrindo, nephrologist all over the country, Jarashchen Shakule, Ebang Mancho Susto, Priyo Mahabai, Priyo Mohsin, Ebang Askir Onustaner, Shamani Totiti, Professor Babralum. Aslam Alekum. Bijare Mashe, Ami Shurukuchi, Amar Prioneta, Bangabun to Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Putis Rodajani, Srodajanachi, Shakul Shoid Der Poti. বঙ্গ মাতা সহ যারা মারা গেছেন বিভিন্ন কারণে সকলের আত্মার রুহের মাগফিরাত কামনা করছি আমাদের এবারের অ্যানুয়াল কনফারেন্সটা একটু डिफरेंट কারণ বৈশ্বিক মন্দা এবং বৈদেশিক মুদ্রার শাস্ত্রের জন্য আমরা এবারের অনুষ্ঠানটা বিদেশি অভ্যাগতদের বাদ দিয়ে আমরা করতে যাচ্ছি আমি আশা করছি এই বিদেশি আমাদের বিজ্ঞ ব্যক্তিরা না আসলো ইনশাআল্লাহ আমাদের এই অনুষ্ঠান আগের মতোই সুন্দর হবে আমি গত দুটো কনফারেন্সে সমস্ত নেফ্রোলজির কাছ থেকে আমার হাসপাতালের সমস্ত সহকর্মী এবং স্টাফদের কাছ থেকে যে সহানুভূতি যে শুভেচ্ছা এবং সহযোগিতা পেয়েছি 
সেটা ভোলার নয় এবং সে কারণেই গত দুটি অনুষ্ঠান যেমন সুন্দর হয়েছে আশা করি ইনশাল্লাহ এবার অনুষ্ঠানও সেরকম সুন্দর হবে ইজ মাই প্লেজার টু ইন্ট্রোডিউস দি নিউলি ইলেকটেড জেনারেল সেক্রেটারি অফ বাংলাদেশ জেনারেল অ্যাসোসিয়েশনস মাই ইয়াঙ্গার ব্রাদার প্রফেসর বাবরুল আলম অ্যাজ হিজ অ্যাটেন্ডিং দিস কনফারেন্স অ্যাজ হিজ ফার্স্ট ওয়ান অফ দ্য ফার্স্ট টু বি দেয়ার অ্যাজ দি সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল লেডিস অ্যান্ড জেন্টেন প্লিজ গিভ এ বিগ হ্যান্ড ফর প্রফেসর বাবরুল আলম thanks to almighty allah subhanahu wa taala he has given us the opportunity to host such a wonderful academic environment for the nephrology community of bangladesh we tried our best to make the program effective but i know there will be many things will come up which could have been avoided which could have been improved Ladies and gentlemen, please accept it is our home event and whatever success is there is because of your presence and I accept all the difficulties that you have incurred in attending this conference as my failure. Ganoshastha Kendra is trying hard to provide equitable treatment to the society irrespective of the social status. The journey is long. and we expect your continuous support to this movement a equitable treatment for all the kidney patients throughout the country this ganoshastha kendra through 45 satellite centers and nine centers in the rohingya camp is providing as much as possible better care service to the community and inshallah the better days are also there we will be improving our quality in the days to come our endeavor to improve the nephro care and academic activities will remain as before and inshallah we will have better coordination in the days to come i will come you all the participants speakers and the chairs for a great get together thank you very much allah hafiz Now I would like to request our today's session guest of honor, Professor Dr. Mohamad Babur Alam Sar, to give his speech. Honorable Chief Guest, renowned nephrologist, not only in Bangladesh but also Southeast Asia, our pride, founder of National Institute of Kidney Disease and Urology, and also Kidney Foundation, Professor Dr. Harun Rashid Sir. Sir will be uh, uh, within hours, within a few minutes, and our special guest our newly elected president of bangladesh renal association ex head of the department of nephrology dhaka medical college hospital professor nijamuddin sir as you know sir is very sick today so sir uh, is, uh, couldn't attend this session i uh, i wish uh, sir early recovery and uh, Uh, distinguished delegates from different parts of our country and the honorable members of Bangladesh Renal Association and of course the organizers of GK conference 2022 especially professor dr mamun mustafa sir 
Uh, very good evening. Uh, I would like to express my gratitude to Father of the Nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and martyrs of the liberation wars, and also the doctors who sacrificed their lives in recent COVID era. I am very much uh, excited to be here as the guest of honor to have a great chance to meet the wonderful colleagues in the field of nephrology. And you know, kidney related disease are on the rise all over the globe, especially in developing country like Bangladesh. Considering this, Ganoshastho Kendro is providing quality dialysis service with a very nominal charge to all the needy people of Bangladesh. Not only that, the dialysis center also provides services to its ultra poor patient at free of cost. The Ganoshastho Dialysis Center, the largest of its kind in the country, provides 300 session hemodialysis daily in four consecutive sessions. Moreover, our government has taken a huge initiative to set up 50 bed kidney dialysis center in 22 medical college hospitals and 10 bedded center in 44 district hospital at a total estimated cost of over 2.55 billion taka under project. I am now the project director of that, uh, of that dialysis center. In this regard, I would like to pay my special gratitude to Honorable Prime Minister, Mother of Humanity, Sheikh Hasina. A healthy life is the greatest gift for anyone. All of us must strive to make healthy living a way of life. Human endeavor to create a healthy and disease-free world has resulted in advancement in health science. Now is the time to achieve a healthier, safer, and fairer world for all. I am proud to say that Ganoshastho Kendro is heading towards this direction. And the International Conference on Nephrology adding another milestone in that direction. I strongly believe this conference will have a positive impact on our patient as well. Our chief guest, Professor Dr. Haruno Rashid Sir, founder of National Institute of Kidney Disease and Urology, NIGDO, and also founder of uh, Kidney Foundation. Professor Harun Sir is, uh, is, uh, uh, is just within us. As I, uh, I am saying, I, uh, I strongly believe this conference will have a positive impact on our patient as well. Wishing Golo Shasto Kendro Third Nephrology Conference 2022 a more fruitful, successful than the previous time. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabundhu. Today, our chief guest of the inaugural ceremony is with among us, Professor Haruno Roshit Sir. He is the founder and president of Kidney Foundation Bangladesh. 
He has enormous contribution in developing the nephrological field of Bangladesh. You are very lucky to have him as the chief guest of today's session. Thank you so much for gracing our session with your presence, sir. Now I'd like to request Professor Harun Rashid sir to give his speech. I'm sorry for the late arrival of this important seminar. At the same time, I am very happy that I've given the opportunity to take part in this important ceremony of Ganashastra Kendra, which is known everywhere in the world as a healthcare professionals and contribute to the health of the people, common people, particularly the poor and needy of the. It is my pleasure to be here to speak something on the kidney disease, dialysis and kidney transplantation in this country. As everybody knows that about 85 crore people has been suffering from chronic kidney disease throughout the world and up to 10 percent is suffering from end-stage kidney failure. The most important causes of chronic kidney disease nowadays, even in Bangladesh today, is chronic glonephritis, second is diabetic nephropathy, and third is hypertension. As you know, that because of this huge number of chronic kidney disease around the world in South Asian population, the chronic kidney disease is more than 10 percent. It is varies from 16 to 18 percent. A small survey is done by the ICDDRB along with the Kidney Foundation, Hospital and Research Institute. We have found that today the prevalence of chronic kidney disease has risen from 16 percent 10 years before. Now it has raised to about 20 percent in some areas. Although this does not reflect the percentage of chronic kidney disease of the whole country of the Bangladesh. Even then, if this people has been suffering from chronic kidney disease according to the rough statistics done, it is presuming that disease is still increasing. During the COVID-19, the number of chronic kidney disease has risen up in every part of the world and as well as it is affected to Bangladesh population and many of them develop acute kidney injury followed by chronic kidney disease and end-stage kidney failure. If we like to improve the condition of this chronic kidney disease, we have to fight against with all people, with all association, particularly the Bangladesh General Association and also the stakeholders. And we have to think about two things. In one way, the prevention of the chronic kidney disease and number two, the treatment of chronic kidney disease. If we consider for the prevention of the chronic kidney disease, we have to increase the number of healthcare professionals, particularly the professions who are involved to treat chronic kidney disease. As it is, because of, to do this is not very easy. Because to do 
a nephrologist. It takes about five years in Bangladesh. So more opportunity should be set up both to the government and the non-government health professionals how to improve the medical men, men professional healthcare professional to this country. And number two is the training is the um, utmost importance to provide the health to provide the health to all people in every corner of the world. Fortunately, Bangladesh has the health professional which are not doctors, but the primary care professionals, which is about 14,000 to 16,000 according to the government statistics. So if we can start the prevention program with the primary health care profession, perhaps we can able to improve the uh, improve the prevention of progression of chronic kidney disease. So side by side, we have to give more stress on to the prevention as well as to the treatment and to make healthcare profession to add all side together. If we can do that, perhaps in the next 10 to 15 years, we are able to control the disease. Even then, we have to make the training program, short and long training program, in order to improve the knowledge of which is being uh, seen in everywhere in the world. If we like to keep pace, we have also to give stress of more and more training to our health professional at all levels, starting from the nurses to the doctors to the technological and to the uh, health engineer. The government is trying very hard to do this at all levels, but we have to work very fast. Otherwise, we'll be lagged behind to many of these South Asian countries and also more so in other countries as well. Therefore, let us try our best to see at all levels how to improve the health, the prevention program, the short and long term training program and everywhere so that we can make the country a prestigious country known to all areas of Bangladesh. Allah Hafiz, Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent speech. Now I'd like to extend my thank to the senior professors who has come from afar to make this program a success. Professor Shoidu Jamaman Selim, sir. Professor Shanur Alam, sir, from NIGDU, who is newly elected vice president of Bangladesh Renal Association. <laughs> Professor Abhim Mubashar Alam, sir, who is the head of the Department of Rangpur Medical College and newly elected vice president of Bangladesh Renal Association. We have also among us associate professor, Dr. A.N.M. Esanul Karim, sir, who has come from Shohid Mansur Jair Rahman Medical College and who is newly elected organizing secretary of Rajshai Division. Thank you so much, sir. We are honored with your presence. We have also our EC committee member, Dr. Saidur Rahman from Dhaka Medical. Now I'd like to request the chairman of the scientific committee, Professor Mahabub Rahman sir, to give his vote of thanks. Distinguished
chief guest, uh, honorable teachers, professors, and respected audience. <clears throat> so welcome to this uh, beautiful evening. And we had already heart, diabetic, kidney diseases. And we have a very good session. And <clears throat> we have also at least 12 sessions tomorrow. So these sessions are very interesting and they cover a lot of uh, emerging kidney diseases. And they're renowned speakers. And I hope, we, we all hope that we'll enjoy tomorrow's presentation. And we invite you, you all to attend the session and to make this conference a successful one. Thank you. Now I'd like to request the chairman of the organizing committee to hand over the crest to our guest of honor. Now I'd like to request the chairman to hand over the crest to our chief guest, Professor Harun Roshid Sar. Our newly elected Secretary General of Bangladesh Association <laughs> on behalf of BRA receiving the bouquet. Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip! He should go.
Moving to our raffle draw section for the staffs. For this session, I would like to request Professor Sattar Sar and Professor Mohsinuddin Ahmed Sar, Brigadier Mohsinuddin Sar, to conduct the session. জ্ঞানস্বাস্থ্য কেন্দ্র তৃতীয় কনফারেন্সে সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আসলে আমাদেরকে আমরা যে অনুষ্ঠানটা এখন করবো এই অনুষ্ঠানটা সবার পরে হয় এক্সাইটিং অনুষ্ঠানটা রেফেল ড্রটা সবার হয় কেন রেফেল ড্র হয়ে গেলে সবাই চলে যায় আপনি খাওয়া দেন যা দেন সব কিন্তু সবাই কিন্তু রেফেল ড্রর জন্য খাওয়া দাওয়া সবাই খায় না রেফেল ড্রর জন্য সবাই থাকে এখন আমি শুধু বিনীতভাবে অনুরোধ করব রেফেল ড্র শেষ হওয়ার পরে আরও প্রোগ্রাম আছে আরও ডাক্তারদের অনুষ্ঠান আছে সবাই মিলে আমরা গান ইয়ে করব মা মোস্তাফি স্যার গান করবে আপনার স্যারের গান না শুনে চাইবেন না প্লিজ এখানে আমাদের এই নবনির্বাচিত র্যানাল অ্যাসোসিয়েশনের সেক্রেটারি সহ প্রেসিডেন্ট স্যার আসতে পারে নাই স্যারকেও আমি বিনীতভাবে অনুরোধ করবো যে আমাদের অনুষ্ঠানে থাকার জন্য এখন রেফেল ড্র রেফেল ড্র আসলে ঘুটা দিতে হয় না এই সবাই ফেলেছেন কি না সবাই ফেলছে আজকে স্টাফদের জন্য রেফেল ড্র শুরু হচ্ছে প্রথমে বিশতম তারপর আস্তে আস্তে কমতে থাকবে দেখা যাক কার ভাগ্যে আসে ওকে আমাদের বাচ্চা নাই তো বেশি এখানে আরো যদি ছোট ছোট বাচ্চা থাকে তারা তাদেরকে সামনে নিয়ে আসবে তারা উঠাতে চেষ্টা চেষ্টা করবো যে মনে হয় আমি যদি উঠাই মনে হচ্ছে যে যে আমি কারেটা উঠাই বেশি বিশতম স্যার বলছে বিশতম কে উঠাচ্ছে বিশতম পুরস্কারের জন্য নাম্বার এসেছে প্রথম নাম্বার তিন শেষ নাম্বার পাঁচ মাসখানেরটার জন্য কে উদ্গ্রীব মাসখানেরটা কত হতে পারে সাত হয় নাই এক কে বলল তিন মাঝখানেটা যে এক বলছিল সেটাই সঠিক থ্রি ওয়ান ফাইভ নাম্বার থ্রি ওয়ান ফাইভ ওয়ে পাওয়া গেছে চলে আসেন সামনে আমাদের ম্যাট্রন পেয়েছেন অত্যন্ত আনন্দের বিষয় বিশতম পুরস্কার আমাদের মেট্রনের জন্য একটা তালি ওকে তুলো তুলো 
এবার উনিশতম কোন টেনশনে রাখবো না তাড়াতাড়ি বলে দিব টু এইট সিক্স টু এইট সিক্স দুইশো ছিয়াশি ওকে ওকে অনেক পরিশ্রম করেছে লিডন এবং সে পেয়েছে ধন্যবাদ লিডনের জন্য জোরে তালি যারা লিটন কে চেনে না লিটন হলো আমাদের এই হাসপাতালের সিভিল ইঞ্জিনিয়ার ইন ইন চিফ তো ওর ও সারাদিন পরিশ্রমে ব্যস্ত থাকে পুরো হাসপাতালে যেখানে যেতো ঝামেলা আছে সবকিছু লিটনের ঘরে থাকে লিটন তোমাকে কনগ্রাচুলেশন এখানে ভাঙা ঘড়া কিন্তু ভাঙা ঘড়া কিন্তু ও লিটনই করে চোদ্দ তার পড়ার নাম্বারটা বলে নাই কে আশা করতেছেন কত শুধু চোদ্দ তো নয় আঠা নাম্বার আছে সাত ইস আর একটু একবার যেন ওয়ান ফোর এইট ওয়ান ফোর এইট ওয়ান ফোর এইট ওয়ান ওয়ান ফোর এইট টু ওয়ান ফোর এইট থ্রি নাল আঠারো তম পুরস্কার জন্য চলছে টু ফাইভ সিক্স টু ফাইভ সিক্স টু ফাইভ সিক্স ওয়ান টু ফাইভ সিক্স টু কে পাইছে কে হাত তুলেন আগে হাত তুলেন কুইক 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 সতেরো তম পুরস্কার খুব সুন্দর নাম্বার প্রথম এক শেষেও এক মাঝখানে না চলে আসুন তো দ্রুত চলে আসুন হুম একশো একচল্লিশ ভোল্ট মানে আমাদের ইলেকট্রিশিয়ান উনি পেয়েছেন এই কে আমাদের ইলেকট্রিশিয়ান পাইছে বুঝছেন তো হ্যাঁ ছবি নেন ছবি নেন পুরস্কার বাবা উঠা 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 একটা উঠা লাস্ট তিনটা নাম্বার এক বলেন কত নাম্বার কত প্রথমটা টু আমরা দেখি মিলাই দেখি হ্যাঁ মিলেছে উনি কিন্তু কতবারও পাইছে কিন্তু প্রত্যেকবারে পায় টু জিরো সেভেন হ্যাঁ মিলেছে গুড আরে মামুন মোসাফির জন্য 
कैंसिल नंबर टू फोर वन नंबर टू फोर वन टू फोर वन टू फोर वन वन टू फोर वन टू टू फोर वन थ्री कैंसिल नंबर थ्री एट टू थ्री एट टू वन थ्री एट टू टू थ्री एट टू थ्री कैंसिल कत भाग्य जोड़े गल आगे जो आगे नंबर नंबर वन फोर सेवन वन फोर सेवन यस प्लीज कम नंबर वन सिक्स सिक्स नंबर वन सिक्स सिक्स नंबर वन सिक्स सिक्स एकश छी वन सिक्स सिक्स वन वन सिक्स सिक्स टू वन सिक्स सिक्स थ्री कैंसल के कल दो ना क्यों आ भाग्य प्राय छूटे गए ओके नेक्स्ट नंबर वन फोर लास्ट कत वन फोर फोर थे वन पार दी जेटा ओटा यस वन फोर थ्री वन फोर थ्री कैसे वैसे भाग्यवान टू सेवन टू सेवन जीरो टू सेवन जीरो टू दूसरे सत्तर कथाय घुमाय परवर्ती नंबर वन जीरो क्विक 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 मुंडा
नेक्स्ट लकी टू वन जीरो 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 टू वन जीरो यस प्लीज कम अनेक कष्ट रूम ठीक करते पे गे मिठू हाँ नेक्स्ट नंबर लास्ट नंबर थ्री फर्स्ट नंबर वन मास्क ने तीन तरह के नाम है वन नाइन थ्री वन नाइन यस आपने इंटर पास हुआ है कैसा क्या आपने रखने ना ही शामने वन नाइन थ्री गुड नेक्स्ट नंबर टू टू तापरे गोल्ला टू टू जीरो के पैसे गुड एकदम ठीक है सर एबार पंचम गिफ्ट टू मास्क ने बोल लाम ना लास्ट नंबर थ्री नो नो टू एट थ्री टू एट थ्री के पूरे दिन ना पूरे दिन ना सुधा हाँ वो एक तो हो जाएगा देखिए बाबा हाँ नो नो उधर उधर के धर 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 हाँ हाँ गुड हम्म ओके थैंक यू जाए लास्ट नंबर थ्री फर्स्ट नंबर थ्री मास्क का नेट्टा लकी नंबर सेवेन थ्री सेवेन थ्री थ्री सेवेन थ्री वो जासे नहीं बोल रहा है ना बालों के लिए देखें थ्री सेवेन थ्री तो हिप प्राइस ना थ्री सेवेन थ्री चार नंबर ना लास्ट नंबर सुनो सुनो नंबर आते हैं लास्ट नंबर वन फर्स्ट नंबर वन एवं मिडिल नंबर आगे जितना चिलो इट है या वन सेवेन वन वन सेवेन वन अरे आवाज दाव जोरे ये तो शबाश ओके उधर गुड़ो हाँ नहीं आठ डाक्टर नहीं होने डाक्टर के लिए बोले नाम नूम कोई तो मुंह मुंह नहीं आया कौन खूब सुंदर, लास्ट नंबर वन, सॉरी लास्ट नंबर सेवेन, फर्स्ट नंबर वन, मास्क का नंबर, नो, ए खाली जीरो रहते प्रॉब्लम होता क्या नो, यस इट्स राइट जीरो वन जीरो सेवेन, ए बार बार कितने भालो बोलते से, वन जीरो सेवेन 
Good. Now, yes. Akon Guru Bombay second prize. Asta Asta Bolbo. Ebar, first number one, second number nine, last number. Yes, seven cables. Yes, come, come, please. Hurry. এই পুরস্কারে দেওয়ার জন্য আমরা প্রফেসর সেলিমকে এখানে আসার জন্য অনুরোধ করছি শিরিন আক্তার পেয়েছে এটা না দ্য ফার্স্ট প্রাইজ এটা আমি নিয়ে যাব নাম্বার ওয়ান বলবো না তারপরে আমাদের ডাইটিশিয়ান সবাইকে করে দাঁড়িয়ে দিচ্ছি Thank you. Purushkar Bitoroni, Amadeh Shesh, Airpore Kaljana Fukram. Jara Pannai, Dukkar Kejo Nai, Tegitta Pela Din. Nagai Mosar Habi, Inshallah. 